So with multiplayer coming eventually, and I have literally nothing to do except twiddle my thumbs anxiously, I decided that this is the best time to start testing builds for the eventual seasonal start, when the new servers for the game go live and we all jump around with anticipation. This means I need to find builds that work for anyone with a fresh start. Builds that usually have little to no uniques, and builds that can also level very easily and quickly. Another reason I'm going on this endeavor is the fact that there will be a large amount of new players playing Last Epoch for the first time, meaning they will probably need some guidance. So I also need to make sure that these builds are very simple without too many crazy mechanics or complicated skill setups. Hello, this is Dread and I have an epic build for you. Today, we'll be going over Hammer Throw Enra's Crit Paladin, a build focused around doing what our ancestors of old did, playing Diablo 2, throwing construction equipment with immense force in a circle. But sadly, Last Epoch isn't a perfect game. If you end up trying the hammered in of old in Last Epoch, you're probably going to end up being disappointed. In Last Epoch, skills have skill trees. This means that we are essentially bound to what is laid out to us by EHG beforehand. And one of the quirks of our fan favorite skills iteration in Aterra is the fact it kind of just deals very low amounts of damage at a base. So hammers usually are very good for applying ailments or producing smite procs, but not for actual straight up damage, which is weird considering if you're kind of just throwing hammers at people, you would assume that they would do more damage. And if you ever tried playing with the spiral node and played a straight up hammered in of old, you will notice that you hit like a wet noodle. But fear not, my tool time enthusiasts, as we have a solution. Enra's technique disables a lot of the functions of hammer throw, like spiral, chain, or orbit, but it gives us a lot more damage and a decent amount of base critical strike chance. This is great because this on top of the double damage chance inside Hammer Throw's tree is enough to make the skill actually do damage with its hits. And we also get access to one of the strongest nodes in the entire game, Mana Star Forging. Mana Star Forging lets us continue to spam hammers even if we are out of mana, meaning that we can have whatever absurd mana costs on Hammer Throw and never have to deal with the consequences. This has innate synergy with the Shield Breaker node at the bottom half of the Forge Guard tree, which means we get free shred for our damage. This means we can have a 40 plus mana hammer throw, but have no care in the world. This does mean we are constantly at negative mana, but the rest of our build reflects this idea. Another strength of the build is being able to utilize Avatar of the Spire. Since we can't shotgun enemies with our hammers through Iron Spiral anymore, it means we can just grab Avatar and shoot out projectiles in a Nova. This is insane quality of life while clearing dungeons and monolith farming, and it is one of the best feelings in Last Epoch in my opinion to essentially clear the entire screen with just a few clicks. It is absolutely amazing. Dread approved. For another skill we have, we have Sigils of Hope on Numlock Autocast. If you want to learn more on how this works, a link in the description to a video explaining it will preside. To put it in layman's terms, we press button and we get four stacks of sigil, which gives us a large amount of flat damage and armor. Thanks to a patch, a while back that changes skill cues in Last Epoch. This means as long as a button is held down first, it will trigger before anything else does when we have the mana to cast it, which is all the time thanks to the autocast setup. 
This means that our sigils will always proc first before our hammer throws, meaning that our sigils will have 100% uptime with no problems whatsoever. We then incorporate skills like Volatile Reversal and Smite, which either have no mana cost or can have no mana cost while we're out of mana, meaning we can get a large amount of throwing attack speed, mobility, and damage for essentially free, and they fit perfectly with our out of mana idea. The last skill we have at our disposal is Holy Aura, which is a buff skill that works even if we don't manually cast it, and it just works passively. Which means this is perfect for us, because we don't have mana to cast it anyways. It gives us a large amount of elemental resistance and damage for free. So one of the best things about throwing damage in Last Epoch is jewelry affixes. We get a very large amount of throwing flat damage and attack speed from our rings and amulet. This is to make up for the fact that our weapons are glorified stat sticks and don't apply much to our hammers. Speaking of weapons, we get to use anything we want. You can do wield, use a two-handed weapon, or sword and board it. Doesn't matter too much other than the stats we get. If you want a sword and board version of this build, I would suggest checking out the description of the video. And while you're down there, you should like the video and subscribe to the channel because these kinds of videos take forever to make. For this video, we'll be focusing on the dual-wielding aspect, and that's because we get to use a katana and an eagle wing. The eagle wing is strong because its implicit 4% base critical strike chance applies to everything, meaning that we get a bunch of free base crit for just being a throwing build. We then use a katana because it is a sword, which is the only weapon type that can be offhanded by a sentinel, which gives us a large chunk of global critical strike multiplier, which is perfect for our purposes here. For our rings, we just want whatever combination of throwing flat fire, physical, and attack speed we can muster. Eventually, in perfect land, you would want a tier 6 to 7 modifier, a T5 modifier, and a T4 sealed modifier equaling to three prefixes each of what I just mentioned. Obviously, this is a hard bargain because of the fact that the higher the tier of an affix, the harder it is to seal it, but it has a lot of power behind it, and it's something we can eventually aim for. It's not impossible. And it presents a lot of endgame power for a build that is already very strong in the early game. The other two important slots are for the helmet and body armor. In these slots, we can get a heaping of increased critical strike chance and increased hammer throw damage, which is important because we're scaling fire and physical damage at the same time, meaning we need generic percentage increases to damage to scale ourselves properly. One thing you can potentially do is get a pair of Laraka's Claws with throwing attack speed on them as its legendary affix, and that will definitely outclass any pair of rare gloves you can make, but this is extremely rare, so good luck with that. For our idle slots, we love throwing attack critical strike multiplier large Rye idols. These are our best in slot, and you can't be beat. We can run four of these alongside a Throne of Ambition. Throne not only gives us a decent chunk of increased fire damage, which scales half of our damage by the way, it also gives us a large amount of armor during boss fights, letting us shrug off hits much easier. And it's not really necessary, it's just more of a nice thing to have and something you should eventually farm. For Blessings, the only one that is 100% important is Throwing Damage Leech's Life from the Black Sun. This will let us sustain ourselves easily. Until we get to this point, we can use one of the two quest rewards for one of the earlier quests, Urza's Ledger, which gives us Avarice, which lets us leech 3% of our elemental damage as life. It's a replacement until we get the blessing. We do have fire damage, so these gloves will work until we rush for the blessing. 
This is by far one of the most important things for the build and is the first blessing you should farm for after reaching Empowered Monoliths. So for leveling this build, we will actually just end up using Hammer Throw throughout the entire campaign as soon as we get it. We will be using Iron Spiral mainly as early on it gives us a lot of single target damage for free. This node is very strong for a long time, up until we start entering the monoliths at level 40-ish. I will be leaving a planner on how I leveled this character before I transitioned into Enris Technique, and I suggest others to level with it. One thing I would like to note is after reaching monoliths, I would suggest saving two level ups to Hammer Throw, because only allocating Enris Technique is bad because you're not going to have mana start forging. So you want Enres and Mana Star Forging at the same time. So you just skip a level, save some points, and wait. Once you have both of these notes, you can easily transition into an Avatar of the Spire setup, and eventually you'll be dealing enough damage to clear Monoliths with ease. Another tip is while you're leveling, you can get minus three mana cost rings for your throwing attacks, which can let you spam Hammer Throw Iron Spiral a bit more before having to replenish your mana with Vengeance. Now, obviously, this isn't that crazy of a leveling section in the video, but to be honest with you, keep it simple, stupid. It's very simple, so I would just suggest doing it. It's not that hard. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video and also end up leveling and enjoying the build. If you haven't already, I'd suggest checking out my Discord, where I've been building up a small ARPG-focused community. And you can also check my streams on Twitch at Dreadful. Links will be in the description for these, as well as planners and my loot filter I used for this build. With all that being said, this has been Dread, and I'm off to go work on other projects. Bye!
Thank you.